Hey, y'all. I'm Lauren from Raleigh, North Carolina, and I do developer relations at Sanity. Aloha, everyone. I'm Kat from Las Vegas. I also do developer relations at Sanity. Some fun facts about Lauren and I is we both love pickles. Our favorite color is green. And we both love anime. So Sanity.io is a platform for structured content that helps you manage and deliver your content however and wherever you need. It replaces your need for a CMS and lets you treat content as data so it can flow over APIs. It comes with a content link, a studio, and powerful tooling. Sanity Studio is an open source content editing environment that you can quickly set up with simple JavaScript and customize with React. It offers real-time collaboration, field-level revision controls, conditional fields, it supports nested and repeatable fields, custom validation, workflows, and much more. The studio interacts with your content lake, a real-time document store for JSON with a powerful asset pipeline. You can use APIs to query, mutate, patch, export, import, and listen to changes. It can You can query it with GraphQL and with Grok. Grok is an open source query language for JSON. We built the content lake so that you can have a single source of truth. With structured content, you can use it in many places at the same time, but sometimes you want to tell these other systems that something happened with your content, and that's what we're here to talk to you about today. We want to talk to you about webhooks and launch what we believe is the most powerful implementation in the content space. All right, so what are webhooks? What is a webhook? Webhooks are HTTP requests that can be configured to trigger when something changes in your system. In most content platforms, they are fairly simple and you're given a limited controls over these requests when they trigger or fire. We wanted to make webhooks for the content like really powerful by letting you decide exactly when they should trigger, but also how the request and its payload should look like. Luckily, we have invented a query language for JSON called Grok. We have realized that we could use Grok in combination with document events to make something really interesting. Grok lets you filter a collection of JSON documents with Boolean logic, and it lets you project the results in whatever shape you want. To give you a quick sense of how granular you can go, you can decide to only have a webhook fire if a document that has pickle as a part of the title has an image in its main image field that's mainly green has updated or if a product's price has been reduced when it was published, or if a document went from in progress to approved in its workflow state. We also thought it would be nice to use Grok to shape how the webhook request payloads should look like. This is powerful because it means that you, in many cases, can skip the step where you would need to do additional data fetching and manipulation in a serverless function. And in cases where you want to use webhooks with serverless functions, you can control exactly what it should get. And you can authenticate the function that was invoked by your project's webhook and not someone else. All of this can be set up using the API or the management interface. Today, we will be showing it via the management interface. Now, like we mentioned earlier about Grok, we'll be using it today in our webhooks example. And now we have Delta Grok. Delta Grok is an extension of Grok, which makes it possible to reason about changes done to the document. There are different functions that come with Delta Grok, like before, after, and changed any. In today's example, we're going to be using the changed any function, which returns true if certain or specified attributes have been changed. So why are we so stoked about Grok powered webhooks? It means you can cut out the middle step in a lot of cases. So you don't have to do round trips querying for data after you've received a webhook. You get more done with less code and less time. Now let's see it in action and run a demo of webhooks. Okay, so in our demo, we're going to make two webhooks. Our first one, we are going to be triggering a rebuild in Netlify on our project. So every time a new program is added or a new talk is added to our program document type, we are going to trigger a rebuild in Netlify. And we are using a Sanity starter that you can find on sanity.io um, slash get dash started. So this Sanity starter is essentially a starter that maybe you would use if you were having some kind of workshop or event 
a conference. It has document types such as spaces for talks, programs, or persons or speakers, and information about events or sessions. So this is the document types that you get starting out with this studio. So now we're going to start adding our webhook. We're going to head over to our manage dashboard. So once you get mm -hmm. to your uh, manage dashboard, if you go over to your settings, you want to click on settings and you go to webhooks 2.0. And you're going to select add a webhook. And then we need, we have some information we're going to fill in. So we're going to give it a name. We're going to call it new program. And then we're going to add a description. And it's going to be rebuild when a new program is updated or added or deleted. And we have an option here. We're going to select the data set it should respond to. We are going to select all data sets. And for the URL, this is where we would add our webhook URL. And for this, you can head over to your Netlify account and you can find this over in your build hook section in settings. For the purpose of this demo, we're not going to show you how to do that, but you can find information about that in the Netlify docs. Our HTTP method is going to be post. We're going to leave that as it is. And we are going to be triggering this webhook on create, update, and delete, because we want this to build not only when a talk is added or created, we want it to trigger when it's updated and then also if it gets deleted. So here is the best part. This is where Grok comes in. We are going to be adding in a filter. So we are going to be essentially telling our webhook, we only want you to fire when we are, when something is created, updated, or deleted within the document type program only. So we are specifying only the program document type. So look in all of our data or our content and only give us information related to this particular document type. So that's powerful. This is where we're getting super granular about that. And we don't have a projection in this particular webhook, so we're going to bypass that for now. And the API version we're going to use is VX. Um, and then we're going to click Save. So there's our new webhook from the Manage Studio side. Now let's go see if we can trigger a rebuild on Netlify. So we head back over to our studio and we are going to add in a new program and see if we can trigger a rebuild. All right, we've, let's see. And as you can see, we added a new program and the deployment, you can see the deployment was triggered by the hook new program. So we are now building a new deployment. So that webhook worked. It's pretty quick. That's awesome. All right. So let's move on to our next webhook. All right. So for this next webhook, we are going to be creating a Slack bot that every time a person is added or updated, we'll say their name. If it's added or updated, then we need to send a Slack bot to Slack that says name was added to our studio. So I'm going to come back down here to the webhooks, add a webhook, and we'll name it speaker name. We'll give it a description of send Slack message when a speaker name is updated or added. We're going to keep the data set as all data sets. Now, if you go to the Slack documentation, you can find out how to get a URL for webhooks. We're not going to go over that here in this demo, but definitely go get your own URL, stick it in there. And that is our URL ready to be hooked up to a channel we already have set up in our Slack. 
we're going to keep the HTTP request as post or method as post. And we're going to do trigger on create and update. We're going to do the same thing as last time. We're going to add a filter in and we'll do type is equal to person. And we're going to use Delta Grok here. We'll do the before filter. So before name is not equal to the after name. And that's all we're going to have in the filter. So if whatever was before is different than what is saved after, then let's trigger a build. Now, in this one, we're going to actually add a projection. And this projection is going to be what our webhook Slack bot is going to be saying. So we're going to open up some curly braces and we'll call it text. And we'll say, hi, jamstack.conf. We'll do a plus and we'll do the name and add, so hijamstack.conf name and whatever we have has been updated or added, updated or added <laughs> by a, a webhook. And then let's see if an emoji works. We'll do green yeah. heart. So if emojis work in this string, then we should see a green heart in the Slack message. And that is all good. Let's add API version to be VX and hit save. So the last thing we need to do is go back to our studio, go back to persons, and let's make a new person. We'll do a combination of Cap and Lauren. We'll do Caplo. We'll do a, a generate of the slug. We'll leave the image blank, and we'll just add a biography, Caplo's bio. And we'll save that. Well, let's not save it yet, and let's go look at the channel that we have set up. So we did some testing earlier, so ignore those. Those aren't real. Uh, but we have Caplo Mission Control, and here is where our webhook Slack bot is being, the information is being sent to. So we don't see it there, but we should see the name Caplo when I hit publish. Let's go back. And sure enough, and the green heart works. <gasps> Yay! Nice. <laughs> so hi, Jamstack.com. Caplo has been updated or added via a webhook. So by triggering up that Slack bot URL that or that Slack URL that we got earlier and putting it into our manage over here, we are able to set up that webhook that every time a speaker name is updated or added, it sends that Slack bot. And all of that is done, a lot of that is done via this, this Grok filter and projection. So that's why it, you'll hear Grok powered webhooks throughout. So I know I said that we were going to use the change Ginny function for Delta Grok, but we actually used the after and before function. So we got a two for one. That's um, my bad. <laughs> you're welcome. Um, but if you want to try out these webhooks for yourself, you can go to sanity.io uh, slash get dash started and launch a complete starter there. And, or you can run sanity npm init sanity on your command line or head into your project settings once you're up and running. And if you want to get started with Grok, we have great docs and videos on our YouTube channel that you'll get started in no time. I also have Grok in twos that you can check out. And Lauren and I have done a bunch of Grok streams. So if you want to check those out, definitely do that. But thanks so much for listening. Thank you, Jamstack.conf. And let us know what you make with your webhooks. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. After these messages, we'll be right